Alleluia. So, good morning, everyone. For those of you joining us online, and for those who have been, who've been together in person, uh, welcome to New Creation. It's good that we can gather as a body. Before we, before we get into the Word, we're just going to invite the Holy Spirit to minister the Word to our hearts so that um, we'll actually be able to receive what the Lord is desiring to give us. We're trusting that it is the Spirit of Truth that ministers truth to our hearts. Yes. So if you're, wherever you're joining, we're just, we're just going to bow our heads before the Lord. Well, Father, right now we come before you in Jesus' name. Oh, Father, I just pray that your Spirit, Lord, would be moving upon us in a mighty way, Lord, upon every person that is watching right now, joining in person, joining online, wherever we are at. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit, you are able to find us. There's no darkness too thick. There's no situation too hard. There's no distance. There's no time with you. So, Holy Spirit, we just invite you right now to minister to every ear, that you would give us an ear to hear what you are saying to us, your church. We'd have an ear to hear. Now, Holy Spirit, you'd anoint our minds. Give us a mind to understand the mind of Christ. Natural mind cannot comprehend the things that you give us. Mm. So, Lord, renew our minds that we would be able to understand and receive. Now, Holy Spirit, you'd anoint our hearts. Change our hearts where there is hardness. Soften it, Lord. Yeah. Just anoint us in our hearts, Lord, that we would not just be hearers of your word, but we'd also be doers. That, Lord, that we would truly be a living testimony and living epistles of your goodness and love to us. Yes. That, Lord, anoint the words, Lord, to give me the words to speak as I ought. Yes. And that, Lord, as we will be preparing to even close in worship, Lord, yes. coming before your throne once again, Lord. Yes. Lord, help us to ever leave it. Help us to stay in that place, Lord. <coughs> Have your way, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So there was a reason <laughs> we did communion. We did it differently. We served each other. Um, there's a reason for that. Uh, not just because, you know, I want to do things differently. Um, but because we are members of each other. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it says how, and I'm trying to get there. It says, we are members of one body. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting at verse 12 through 14, says, For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. Amen. You know, this is an amazing picture. This is just the, the, the beginning part. We need to get this to, in the beginning. The Spirit of the Lord took each one of us and baptized us into one body. There was a point, a moment of time for each one of us where the Holy Spirit met us somewhere. At one time, at one place. The Holy Spirit got a hold of us and said, this is Jesus. This is the name of salvation. This is the name of hope. This is the name of joy. The name of freedom that you don't have at this moment. For you've been dead in your sins. But the good news is that Jesus came and the Holy Spirit takes us and says, this is Jesus. This is the one I want you to see. This is the one I want you to know. I want to introduce you to somebody. And his name is Jesus. So that you were an orphan, but you have a father because Jesus has taken you to the father. You, hallelujah, you are saved. Hallelujah, in Jesus. And the Holy Spirit takes us and baptizes us into this body. Because the good news is, it's not just you. And it's not just me. But it's each other. You, you meet other people who have been also baptized into that same body. And, and the scripture says, deep speaks unto deep. And, and that spirit speaks to spirit. And all of a sudden you realize, you are my brother. Yeah. You're my sister. Yes. And, and, and you become this thing, this amazing um, creation called the body of Christ. Not one member, but many members. 
coming from different places, having different experiences, but brought into one body. Hallelujah. Brought into one body. I, I praise God because He meets us on our own, but He doesn't leave us there. Hallelujah. I'd be very miserable otherwise. <laughs> I've been there. I've been miserable. I don't like it. Uh, <laughs> but the Lord takes us from that place. And brings us into a body with other people having the same experience of Christ, even though <laughs> I say the same experience in the sense you've been baptized in the same body, but how you experience Christ is not going to be the same. It's not going to look the same. But you're in the same body. You are members one of each other. And as the members of that one body being many, many, but one body, so also is Christ. When we partook of communion, we shared and served one another. So if you got served the first time, you ended up serving the second time. And each one of us got served. Somebody gave it to us. And each one of us gave it to somebody else. Amen. And passed it on. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now turn in your Bibles to Romans 15. We're going to look at verses 5 through 7. I want us to look in these two passages. I want us to just understand as a body. We're taking this advantage. We're taking advantage of this being Communion Sunday to look at what does this mean. Hallelujah. Romans 15, starting at verse 5. We've gotten there. Say amen. amen. Need more time. Hallelujah. I'm going to praise the Lord either way. Whether we found it or we're still looking, either way, it doesn't matter. I'm going to praise the Lord either way. You know, like they say, you knock on the door, but you praise Him in the hallway. You don't wait till you got in the door to praise the Lord. Um, now, verse 5 says, Now the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus. That they, ye may be, the, the, the. okay, go back. <laughs> that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 7, wherefore receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Here's the amazing thing. When the Spirit of the Lord got a hold of you, and wherever you were, whatever that looked like, however you came to know Christ as your Savior, it looked different. But He received you to Himself. Whatever muck and mess you were in. David wrote in the Psalms, You took my feet out of the miry clay and you set me upon a rock. Whatever that miry clay looked like, He met you there. And He received you with miry clay all over your feet. Amen. Have you ever... Some of you are married. I'm not married, but... Um, you ever walk through mud and then come home? And, you know, and, and oh, Lord, have mercy on you. If it just happened to be on a day, and probably moments after somebody worked very hard, sweeping and mopping, and you walk home with your dirty boots. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you know, you're in danger of encountering a mop or a broom at that moment from the unhappy other person who has worked very hard to clean everything. <laughs> It's in the reception you're coming back to. <laughs> I'm, I'm being silly. But there's somebody in whose house you just stepped into with dirty boots. And they did not greet you angrily with a broom or a mop. <laughs> they met you in love. He met you in love and in grace and in mercy. <laughs> he didn't say, no, no, you got to go clean yourself up before you get out. By the way, that's a very practical thing to say. But the Lord met you with the dirty muck on your boots. Yeah. And he received you with dirty muck on your boots. Mm -hmm. He didn't say, no, no, you got to go clean yourself up before you come into my house. God is holy. Amen. He is perfectly holy. But he said, mm -hmm. let me make you holy. You're not holy. That's why you need me. Amen. Let me make you holy. Let me wash your feet. Let me make you perfect. and let, let me give you my righteousness. I will take your sin and I will give you my own righteousness. And it will be called your righteousness. 
the very righteousness in Christ Jesus. Amen? That's what the Spirit did for each one of us. Now, here's the thing. It happens to each one of us individually. Then we have to receive each other. Then we have to receive each other. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is where it can get very quiet. Or we can start laughing. <laughs> or both. Nervous laugh. Nervous laugh. <laughs> Wherefore, receive ye one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Oh my goodness, hang on somewhere. Brother Francis, if you're listening, Brother Francis in Africa would say, hang on anywhere <laughs> to anything. <laughs> Find something to hang on to and pray it's not moving. <laughs> um, the same standard is applied to us. Oh boy. Maybe you've been the one working really hard to clean the house. And at that moment is when your husband or your wife or your children or your, your parents or somebody walks in with dirty boots. Have you ever been the one to greet them with the room of the house? I just cleaned that. There you come walking in with your boots. What a mess. It doesn't happen again. Man. But it says, receive ye one another. As Jesus said, you're not holy, you need to be made holy. You're in sin, you need to be made righteous. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is everlasting life in Christ Jesus. And the Spirit of the Lord took each one of us and brought us in together to a body and set the standard. As Christ has received you, so we'll receive each other. That means that we met somebody with a mom who need to do some repenting right now. Um, even though it might have been justified because our floor was nice and clean. You receive each other. As Christ has received you, that's the standard. Jesus is the standard. The cross is the standard. It's the banner. In Isaiah 59, where it says, The enemy shall come in like a flood, but the Spirit of the Lord shall raise a standard against him. That's the standard. As Christ has received you, Without condemnation, so you need to also receive each other. That's difficult. Why is it difficult? I want us just to go back to that. Can we go a little deeper? But, but this is a practical message, because it's how do we receive each other? Yeah. I want to compare two cities in Galilee, Nazareth and Capernaum. Two towns, not very big. Nazareth would be like Werner. Capernaum would be a little more like Sturgeon Falls, a bit bigger. There's some more stuff there. Um, two times, Jesus ministered to both of them. This is going to sound really silly, but bear with me. What you receive is what you get. Mm -hmm. Jesus came into both of those towns. Both of them he encountered people who were demon-possessed or oppressed, whatever language, they were being demonized. Satan was riding them and beating them up. They were, they were sick people. Everybody needs salvation. Everybody needs love and life. That's why Jesus came proclaiming his kingdom. He came to both of these cities. Nazareth received him as a carpenter. Capernaum received him as a miracle worker. Nazareth got fixed doors. And built tables. Maybe if you got on the waiting list, he fixed your chairs. That was nice. You could sit down but they did not receive him as anything more. When he stood up in the synagogue in Luke 4 and he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because you have anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He said, At liberty those that are bound. The people reacted and they said, Who does he think he is? Yeah. We know Joseph and Mary. We know his brothers. We know his sisters. We've known this kid ever since he was around. We were there when you were in diapers. Yeshua. Who do you think you are? They got so mad, they wanted to throw him off the cliff. They didn't just get indignant, they got mad. They were angry. How dare you? How dare you quote the prophet Isaiah? Read that in our synagogue and claim to be the one that, in whom this is fulfilled. They received a carpenter and they got fixed doors. Capernaum received it as a miracle worker. They had open doors. Mm -hmm. But a few people received him as the Son of God. Mm -hmm. And to those who received him, he power to become the sons of God, yes. who believed on his name, 
were born not of flesh, not of blood, nor of the will of man, but of God. Hallelujah. They believed him, but you, rec you receive what you get. Yeah. You receive a carpenter, and that's what you end up with. You get fixed doors, praise the Lord. But if you can receive more, that's what you're going to get. They saw the people believe that they would be healed. You know the story of the, of, of the paralyzed man? He had four really good friends. They were good friends. They carried him. That's that showing friendship. They dug into somebody's roof. The, the person who had the dug in roof probably didn't like them too much, but unless they fixed it for him. But they believed if I could just get into Jesus, he's going to get healed. There's no room to get in the door. We're going to get into the roof. That's faith. Because they received him as more than a carpenter. Amen. Hmm. But the Nazarenes, that Nazareth, that Nazareth folks, they could only receive him as a carpenter. Oh, so they missed out. They got nothing. They got what they received. Nothing. The Bible says he could not even do many miracles there because of their unbelief. Just think about that for a moment. Your unbelief will stop God from working. He's God. But it made you in his image and likeness. So he wants you to come in agreement with him. They didn't. So Jesus couldn't do much. Because they received him as a carpenter. But a few received him as a miracle worker. They were blessed. But more... But, but, oh, Papa. A few received him as the son of God. Amen. Now here's the thing. That's the standard. What you receive is what you get. How do we receive each other? Christ has received us. But if I receive any one of you as just how I see you in the flesh, that's all I'm going to get. That's all I'm going to get. Paul said we don't judge anybody by the flesh anymore because we need to know Christ that way. We know him thus no more, according to 2 Corinthians 5.16. We, we don't know him that way anymore. We now know who he is, and he is the Son of God set on high. He is the fullness of God present in the fullness of humanity. We don't know him by his fleshly. He's a carpenter. He had working hands. He was a working man. He grew up learning Joseph's trade, but that was not his purpose. He came to redeem all of mankind. He came to open doors that no man can close, and close doors no man can open, not to fix them. But how we receive each other is what you're going to get from each other. Just as Christ receives us. If I receive you in the flesh, then all I get is you in the flesh. When I receive you in the spirit, then I get you in the spirit. Some of you, I, I think, are, 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 we, are you with me? Some of you are getting it, some of you are not getting it. But if, if I say, well, it's just Chris, you get a five foot two guy. And you say, well, it's time to be taller. <laughs> That's all you get. And Chris is a poor substitute for Christ. But if, you, if I can receive Christ or, or any one of you, I don't want to pick on any one of you, but if I receive you as just you, and I've missed out on what God has put in you, and I don't get that. I don't receive that. Why? Because I just see you. I only see you in the flesh. That's all I get. If I look with eyes of flesh, that's what I get is flesh. If I look at you with eyes of the Spirit, man, and I can see what God has put in you. There's a reason why I say I'm glad to see you every day, every Sunday when we meet. Because I'm literally glad to see you. I am glad to receive you. I'm happy to receive you. But I don't want to just receive you in the flesh. I want to receive you in the spirit. I want to receive you in truth. In spirit and in truth. Receive each other. But what you receive is what you're going to get. So some are not happy. Why? Because you're not getting. Because we look in the flesh. Say, well, that person, when they sing, it's amazing the windows are still there. They're not broken yet. <laughs> we were run away. You know, that guy, you know, don't like the way they dress, don't like the way they sing, don't like this, don't like that. Why? Because that's what you're getting. That's miserable. But that's not what God called us to. That's right. That's not what God called us to. He called us to receive one another as a body. We, you, you didn't, none of us lived on an island, never connected to anybody. It's just not reality. You've received Christ from somebody, through somebody, somebody, God used a person 
I'm almost done here. The Apostle Paul needed two encounters on the road. There were two encounters. We don't hear very much about the second one. But the second one is very important. First, so his name was Saul of Tarsus, a Pharisee of Pharisees, Hebrew of the Hebrews. Most Pharisaical guy you could get. I mean, he was an extremist among extremists, you know. Um, and he had letters to go and arrest anybody who followed that way and, and drag them off to prison and death. That was his mission. He had letters of, of, of authorization from the high priest, from the Sanhedrin council in Jerusalem to go up to Damascus and, and arrest people. That's what he was up to. That was his business. There were two encounters. The first one is Jesus. He encountered Jesus on the road to Damascus. A blinding light and a voice of the one who spoke. He said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Saul was blinded and had to be taken by the hand to Damascus. But that's where the second encounter comes in. That the Lord, the same one who appeared to Saul, then appeared to a brother named Ananias. And said, Ananias, you're going to have to go meet Paul, Saul, and lay your hands on him. And pray for him to receive his sight. Ananias felt, um, are you sure, Lord? You know what he's up to, right? I kind of had plans. I don't want to go off to jail. I don't want to get thrown to the lions. I hear they're hungry at this time of year. No. <laughs> I don't want to go there. And then I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. I will reveal to him. I have great plans for you. And I need you to be faithful. <laughs> Paul had received from Ananias. We have to receive from one another. We have to receive each other. We have to... Pray and ask the Lord for help to see each other in the Spirit. To not just see each other by the flesh. Because otherwise that's all you get is flesh. You get very little. You come in and you go and you're going to go out exactly the same way. Yeah. You know, last Sunday I was really blessed. Because I experienced the body of Christ. I, I needed prayer and I got prayer. I said, well, I'm called as a pastor and I'm called as, uh, as an apostle. I needed the body to pray for me. And I was blessed to receive. I was blessed this morning to receive. You get what you receive. Receive you one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now verse 13 says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing and receiving, that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. That's my prayer for each one of, you, uh, one of us. That we receive each other in the Lord. As He has first received us. Amen? Amen. Now this is not going to be easy. But you need to ask for the Holy Spirit to help you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, we have more worship. But I want us to enter into this word. And then I will ask a brother to come up and I'll introduce him. But I would like each of you to stand. And we're going to pray that the Lord will help us to receive one another. We cannot just receive carpenters and uh, Whatever it is that we do for the carpenters, farmers, um, receptionists, you know, whatever it is that we all do. We all do different things. But we're going to ask the Lord to help us see each other for real, in the spirit, not just according to the flesh. And help us to receive from each other. Because this is the body. And the scripture says, you're not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are sickly among you and many even sleep. That's what it means. You're not, we're not discerning each other. That's the context of that passage. So we need to end that. And we're going to end it collectively now. So Lord, as we come before you, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we recognize that you have received each one of us, Lord, in the muck and in the mire. But you welcomed us into your holy, pure, glorious presence, when we were covered in muck and mire and stink. But Lord, you received us to your glory. Lord, you took on our sin and you gave us your righteousness. 
Lord, when we were bound for death, you gave us everlasting life. And we were powerless, you poured out your Holy Spirit upon us. And Lord, you do this for each one that is here. So Lord, help us to receive each other also, as you have received us. To love each other, to accept one another, to see according to your Holy Spirit, not according to our fleshly eyes. And Lord, we want to repent for where we have only looked with fleshly eyes and thus have judged others wrongly because we have not seen what you have seen. And Lord, there were things before us and yet our eyes were blind, our hearts were closed. Lord, we repent of that. Lord, we ask and receive your forgiveness in Jesus' name. That, Lord, we will see each other, we will discern your body, the body that you have made by the blood and by your body that was broken, Lord, that we could be made whole, that by your stripes we are healed. So, Lord, help us as we go into worship, as we go into fellowship, that, Lord, we receive from one another with open hearts, Lord, one towards another, Lord, allowing your Holy Spirit to move through us, Lord. For your glory, for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask Brother Bobby to come up. We're ready. Saying a hymn that we're dismissed. Now we're not rushing to be dismissed. No. <laughs> uh, but there is there, there is you know, good physical food for us after, but we don't live by bread alone, but by every word. And and uh, just very blessed uh, to meet uh, Brother Bobby. And uh, <laughs> this is <Brother> Bobby. <laughs> there you go. Um, who's just uh, you know. One of the things of receiving each other is that we all have gifts. Amen. And the gifts are not given to us. They're actually given to each other. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to receive from each other those gifts. Because that's how we are blessed, but also the giver is blessed. It's more blessed to give than to receive, but we have to receive as well. Amen. Otherwise, there's no giving. Um, so, yeah, yes. Bobby? Okay. Mm -mm 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 -mm. <laughs> I'm just trying to take everything in this morning. I hopefully I don't fall apart start to weep. <laughs> I tend to do that. I see. I tend to do that, but uh, I'm an outsider. And in one sense, I was here about five years ago. Um, you know, and uh, you know we talk about appointed times. I'm going to take a few minutes and share. And if I don't sing, that doesn't matter. That really doesn't matter. Really matter as far as I go. But, you know, we talk about appointed times with God in our lives. We don't sometimes don't like it. So it began probably yesterday when I went to Manetville because I was there. That was a pastor that I walked with for a long time, almost 30 years. And I met uh, Chris there. Oh, is it? Well, can you hear me? Yeah. Come on, Do we really need it? <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, okay, okay. Well, we can deal with that after. If I have to. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. So I came here probably about five years ago. As far as the the music goes, I had kind of laid it down because probably about three months I picked it up. Again. But. Um, I mean, that, that was actually the last time that I actually played in this situation was here five years ago. It's just, it's just, I don't know, not about coincidences. It's just incredible how God is. Everything. It's just, but uh, as I was sitting there, we talked about symbolism. And the Lord gave me, uh, he gave me a symbol. And as I was taking this in, I thought, wow, that's pretty incredible. 
And I quickly realized that really the symbol is it's far reaching but specific to this congregation here. So I he just showed me DNA. How DNA works. Everything has a DNA. You look at a human being, it has DNA. You look at a horse, you know from studying DNA. So we have the DNA of God. Right? But something happened when I was here about five years ago and, and I, my first I have such a high Admiration, respect for uh, Jean-Claude. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't. Clarisse. Pardon? Clarisse. Clarisse. Jean-Claude Clarisse. Clarisse. That they made a decision years ago to allow and invite the Holy Spirit to come. So the Lord, when He was showing me this, is that you know we have DNA, but the thing that mystifies uh, evolution is just the mechanics of the code reading. That the DNA functions because there's a, you know, there's a thing with the code that tells the DNA what to do. Without the code, you just have DNA. Mm -hmm. That's really not living. You can you can find a dead tissue, you know there's DNA there. Mm -hmm. There's no life. And the Lord was telling me that the Holy Spirit is the co-creator. Mm -hmm. Just like in the human body. You know, he's the co-creator. You know, so in the body of Christ, the code, and so, and he was showing me that the code reader is alive and well and functioning here. It just functions. And then there's a light, light stance lit. So my, my recommendation is just guard that with everything you have. Because that's what brings life. And just to hear, I don't know, there was a, a, a girl earlier praying about she got baptized and you know, the trouble, and then, but she said praying, asking God to help her to bring the message of the gospel to, to mm -hmm. someone. This is a young, I would imagine a fairly young believer. Mm -hmm. Do you know, I, I've been a believer a long time and I still struggle oh. in that area. Mm -hmm. How do you bring the gospel mm -hmm. message? Because I tried it in the pool. It works and doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You need the code reader. Mm -hmm. You really need the code reader. And you can be aware that sometimes things happen and you know, you don't. If you fall and you love Jesus, and it's active in your life, you'll have a divine appointed times that, yeah. that'll come. Uh, so I just wanted to encourage you guys. The lights, the lampstand is on. You know? yeah. And I have never seen like usually what happens when the Holy Spirit is active. Usually the leadership accepts it, and you have resistance with the congregation, or the congregation accepts it, and you have. This is kind of a, a normal pattern. And I'm sure that you had your own transitional stuff that, that happened. And there was some stuff that, you know, I, I, we walked a similar path in Manetville with Phil. And I also want to affirm, I, you are definitely apostolic. Mm -hmm. I didn't know this. I just met Chris. It was like, I say, I just, we just bonded. And, and I, how do I know this? Because I walked with an apostle for 30 years. Praise mm -hmm. God. And I see the same DNA. Amen. In your life, I didn't even realize it, but I, you know when you wow. said that, I think this guy is, you know, a bit more mm -hmm. than just a shepherd. Yes. And there's nothing wrong with that. But, no. You know, so you're very blessed. Just uh, this is just very rare. It's, this is a rare thing to have this dynamic, and when you have both that are like this, mm -hmm. the, just you know, now there's the power to heal here. There's yes. the power to cast out devils. Yes. Now there's the yes. power to bring evangelism, yes. salvation to people. Yes. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Because the Holy Spirit is behind. And that's what you need. Mm -hmm. And my biggest prayer this morning, is, because we talk about that, it's called ego. Yes. Our flesh gets in the way. Mm -hmm. And it robs, who first of all, the glory to God, yes. who deserves everything. Mm -hmm. Because without Him, there's really nothing. Mm -hmm. So if He touches our gifts, then there's a benefit. There's going to be something good come out. Not just our flesh. It'll do something to our spirit, and growth, whatever it is. And, you know, and if he doesn't, then all you just got was mediocre. Amen. Yeah, so uh, I just so I was praying. I said, God, I said, what what am I going to do here? Like, what am I going to? My gifting isn't really not a worship leader. That's not really my calling. Uh, but I say, what songs can I just present and you know so uh, there was a couple in there 
I went through something very difficult quite a few years ago, and uh, so what song kind of speaks about that? It's more testimonial, I guess. Oh, yeah. uh, and the other one is just, uh, yeah, who God has really been to me personally, so that the song actually has some meaning. Praise God. And maybe uh, somebody might have gone through something very difficult, you know? Mm. I know, it's hopefully it'll speak to you. Somehow I just to get my songs, I forgot to get them there. Thank you, Jesus. You know, and uh, mm. we'll just, you know, see what we can do here. Praise God. Just takes a couple minutes just to set things up. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I am going to sit down because it's been a long time since I've played standing up. It's just more comfortable. Is that okay? That's okay. All good. Uh, okay, here we go. We're going to take this, bring this down. Not too close if you don't want to. Bang your head. No, you don't want to. That's a good height for Krista. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> Aww. That's okay. Oh, oh. That's, a, that's a compliment. That's what it takes to be an apostle. Yes. I wish I was short. He's tall and oh. here. Look at So the first one's a song written by for Paul. Oh, you want to turn this on? I guess okay, come and see your stuff. Jenny. Jenny, thank you so much. And then the next one's going to be called, Who Would Not Love You?
And when the rock falls It falls upon you And you get ground to dust No music for your pain You open windows Windows of heaven And then you open me And crush me like a rock And I kiss the sun Oh, I I bow down And I kiss the sun Let the praise, let the praise, let the praise of the Lord be in my mouth. Let the praise of the Lord be in my mouth. Let the praise of the 
of love is what you are to me. A greater friend no one could ever be. In holiness for enough your spirit's touch. Through never-ending love, you give so much. And who would not love you? And who would not cherish you? And who would not serve you all their days? And who would not Father's love is what you give to me. A guiding hand, a light so I could see. In knowing you, I found my heart's desire. In loving you, I've touched. Your holy fire. Who would not love you? Who would not cherish you? And who would not serve you all the days? And who would not praise you? And who would not That God did not tell us to give up. That's right. And those things can happen 
Yeah. Because it's very, and I'm not condemning anyone, uh, so please bear with me. But that happens anytime we believe a lie. Somebody says, you're done, you're finished. Life tells you you're done, you're finished. You tell you you're done, you're finished. It's very easy. I said I got prayer and I needed it. I felt so discouraged um, a little while ago. I had no idea I was going to go on. But I'm, uh, I'm, I'm grateful that the body of Christ came to pray. So, all of this to say, our brother needs some prayer. Amen. Amen. But I believe there are some others here that do need some prayer as well. Because some of you have given up things that God has not called you to give up. Yes. You put things on the shelf and God said, what are you doing with that? I gave it to you. Yeah. You know, the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Meaning he doesn't take them back. No. And say, no, no, I don't want you to do that anymore. Well, God makes a decision. Do you think he changes his mind? No. That doesn't... Oh, whether we mess up or not, whether we miss the mark or not, and, and there was a call given at one point at this, so that there, there are two people here that need prayer. So I'm going to ask Pastor Jeannie to come up and, and pray with me. And Pastor Curtis, I'm going to ask you, you, if you're willing to come up for prayer, because there's been some things, sometimes we put things on the shelf and say, well, I'm not good enough, I'm not called, I'm not this, I'm not that. Moses gave a laundry list to the Lord of all the reasons why the Lord was wrong. I've been there, I've given the laundry list, assigned it on the bottom. But God says those things are not true. God gives something and does not take it away. Right. Ever. That has never happened in the history of humanity. No. Because God's word is true yesterday, today, and forever. So Brother Bobby, Sister Clarice, we're going to pray. We are going to pray as a body. So 